Oh, just... So I guess we just wanted to have a general conversation about COVID. Um, we have the Delta variant now, which has been a real game changer for us here in Australia, hasn't it? I mean, things are not going the way that we were expecting with our lockdowns and things like that. So I, I guess we wanted just to have a little bit of a general conversation about how we think this might be impacting people living with bipolar disorder. I know a lot of my clients are experiencing depression again um, and just that complete lack of behavioural activation, not being able to go out, not being able to see friends. Mm -hmm. um, most people are struggling with low mood um, that I can see, even in research participants as well. So um, mm -hmm. did anyone have any thoughts that they wanted to share about their experiences? Or I think for me, it's the lack of structure that... Uh, you know, getting up, having breakfast, you know, getting in the car or on the bus to go to work, um, you know, getting my breakfast coffee, you know, you know, at my local coffee shop, um, <coughs> the social chit chat at work. Uh, and, you know, that's now changed because, well, you know, work starts at 9am on a Zoom meeting and so you call out of bed at five to nine and, and then, you know, you listen to the latest doom and gloom from, you know, how many cases today how many deaths, how many vaccinations, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, uh, so I think there's been a lot of subtle changes. And okay, it was okay for the first month, you know, or the first six weeks or what have you. It just felt like, well, you know, it's like almost like being on holidays or... Um, um, but now that it's been dragging on, I think that the, uh, the long-term effects are, you know, settling down, that, you know, you realise that, uh, you know, you haven't actually made contact with, you know, some of your friends and acquaintances who you probably wouldn't make much attempt to contact um, before COVID, but you'd see them anyway, you know, like you're just casual encounters or, um, or what have you. But now you've actually got to make an effort, you know, to get them on Facebook or ring them up or send them an email or whatever. Uh, the interactions are a lot more difficult. So, and I think the other issue for me was, you know, because I'm, you know, a person who's living with bipolar, uh, the whole issue of feeling pretty vulnerable, that if I did, in fact, you know, start to become unwell, how accessible are the mental health services on the local GP actually going to be um, because of the strain on the health system? Mm. Yeah, I think um, it's it's interesting on the strain on resources sort of question because, you um, you know, I, I I have bipolar myself as well, and 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 yet uh, for me the lockdown hasn't been a problem, but it's always a personal thing uh, for everybody. And 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 I, I, the the problem for me in running a practice of psychologists um, is just doing that online. So how we keep our own sort of staff morale up is we meet once a week for a Zoom meeting and just have a chit chat sort of um you know social kind of connection between all of the six or eight of us that come to the meeting um but for living with bipolar i think um it is important you know i personally only listen to the doom and gloom report sort of once a day or maybe twice you know uh, but I don't stay connected on it all the time and i think it is important for people to not spend too long listening to all of the numbers and everything and to do what they can. Um, I've been really enjoying doing a lot, having more time to meditate myself. So I've been meditating twice a day. And because I have writing that I do, um, that's been a good thing. So it's not been all bad. But I think what I actually meant to start to say was the um, access to mental health professionals for people who have bipolar and other reasons. Um, before the lockdown, there were huge waiting lists for, for psychologists and, and psychiatrists and so on. Since lockdown, our practice at least has found that uh, the waiting lists we had have dropped because many people don't want to come to face-to-face -face sessions, which sort of paradoxically has mean we've been more available to see people, um, you know, because there's been less demand because it's only those people willing to have um, online sessions who've been coming along. So, you know, that's been one good thing in a, in a generally very depressing outlook for the country and for the people. 
Did you have anything you wanted to add, David? You're muted, David. I think just adding to what um, Margot has said about lots of time, I think it also gives a lot more time to ruminate. And I, I've had people who've just worries that have been fairly dormant have now come to the surface because they have time to mm. think about them. Mm. So that um, I think that's one of the dangers of the lockdown. Mm. Yes, I think that is a really big problem is that lack of structure as Meg, Meg was talking about is just having time and not much to do with it. So keeping keeping yourself sort of busy, which is sort of easier if you have an ongoing job that works while you're in lockdown. But yeah, having that sort of structure and getting out for some exercise every day, I think, you know, doing it all according to the rules, of course, but um, getting out for that exercise every day is super important at, to, as part of the structure, as well as um, meeting up with people if you can via Zoom, taking advantage of any opportunities. And, and seeing if you can see your mental health professionals via, well, might not be Zoom, but via online sessions mm. um, is really important to sort of keep in mind structure is important. Try to do something constructive every day, uh, even if it's just a small thing around the house of cleaning out an old drawer. It sort of kind of makes you feel better if you've done something that you can feel um, you've achieved something that day. Uh, even only in a very, very small way that makes you feel like you have some control because there's such a feeling of being out of control in this whole pandemic. Yeah. There is, um, with routine, and I totally agree with what Margot said, one of the problems is the longer the um, lockdown goes on, the more mm. routine tends to slip. Yeah. And I, I think this is yeah. one of the dangers of... Yeah needing to be very consistent and almost a routine becomes work and making it work to keep your routine. Mm. Yes. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Tanya, what have you found in terms of your people you've been speaking to? I think definitely the routine has been a big problem for most people mm. because if you don't have anywhere to go, why get up? Mm. Um, it's very hard to find, I think, that motivation to stick with it. Mm, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, if you haven't got a train, you've got a catch or a bus you have to get and you just need mm. to get online. And sometimes people don't even need to get online. So I think the, the lack of structure has been very problematic. And I think mm. having a lack of structure and routine often means that it's easy to fall back on things that you know don't work um, mm. to manage your mood. So often people, this will be the time when you'll start drinking more, um, you know, eat binge eating, maybe doing stuff that you know is really unhelpful. Um, but because we're, you know, there's no routine, no structure, why bother? Um, it's very hard then to take a stand against those unhelpful ways of coping, I think, um, at the moment. Mm. I also wondered about moving forward after our lockdown and what our lives are going to look like living with Delta. Um, mm. How is that going to look for routine and how we manage mm. um, as people living with bipolar disorder and, and our clients? Like, how, how are they going to go? Are we going to have still anxiety about going out and seeing friends? Or um, mm. are we able to do the things that we know help our mood in the future? Mm. Um, mm. And what will that look like? I don't know, guys, have you thought about that uh, mm. for yourselves, like Meg? Have you? given any thought to how the future's going to look with Delta. Mm. Yeah, unknown such a problem, isn't it? <laughs> That's... I think, um, um, yeah, I, I think I'm trying to do an inventory, if you like, of the sort of things I used to do before COVID. Um, you know, what were the daily things I did, which I probably didn't take much note of at the time, like, yeah, you know, I really enjoy going to the local coffee shop, you know, for lunch while I'm doing a bit of shopping, et cetera, et cetera. Just the small inconsequential things that you realise how important they were when you can't actually do them. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that kind of trip to the grocery store and you check out the local bookshop. Mm -hmm. um, um, you might run into somebody you know in the local shopping centre and what have you. And so then, you know, I come home and I feel kind of good about it. 
but now I'm not doing that, you know, like, um, I think I've now started ordering groceries online because I just found it's too freaky to go to supermarkets with, mm. you know, people being not socially distancing, et cetera, et cetera. So some of those inconsequential things that now when I look at them in retrospect weren't inconsequential, you know, they were part of a healthy daily routine, mm. like, um, mm. you know, I mean, okay, on the positive side, um, at least I've started going for walks in the local park, which I didn't, you know, was too busy to do before before COVID, but like I can actually walk to my local park, you know, doing lockdown actually. So um, just learning to replace, um, you know, previous activities that I now can't do under COVID with mm. new activities. And I think one of the positive um, things is I've actually got closer to my family who live in the Northern Rivers in Queensland because, you know, we've just been doing um you know video conferences and you know facebook get togethers etc et mm. et mm. um on a daily basis actually which was mm. certainly something that we weren't doing before covid mm. Uh, mm. but you know so but again it's um developing mm. different strategies for getting that kind of social mm. interaction and emotional support uh and validation that hey you know i'm finding it tough but then so are other people and it's not just the fact that I'm more prone to episodes of depression or something. It's it's the fact that you know a lot you know a lot of people are experiencing um, disruption to changes in daily routine and missing out on all of those little things that you know you kind of take for granted. Like, wow, you know it was really nice to go to the pub and get together with people last night. <laughs> hey, you know we can't do that now, so let's think of other ways. Yeah. Somehow getting on the video screen and having a bottle of red. Um, on your own is just not quite the same. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and actually, it's something that's occurred to me about us talking about the lack of structure is just, I think there's a book called Atomic Habits by James Clear, I think. I'm not certain about that, but I think, I think the book's called Atomic Habits. And I think in lockdown, there's, an, you know, use every little thing you can. One of the big messages in that book is, is how to start new habits by just doing the tiniest version of it. So if you were going to want to do some exercise at home, say some push-ups or something, or you know, wall push-ups or floor push-ups or or walking on the spot or dancing, you know, I think dancing as exercise at home is a great idea. Put the music on and dance and music that you really love, boppy, whatever music that makes you dance and dance for exercise. Um, is is a great idea but the the message in the atomic habits book is really about just you know if you're going to do some push-ups but you just can't be bothered just do one mm. it's just a ridiculously small number so if you've got some weights or you know some things at home that you can use as weights to just do the tiniest amount each day so that you actually make some action in the direction of that every day and it's that consistency of every day that makes quite a difference um, because it's it gives your message to yourself that you are committed to this thing even if you're only doing it for a small time so for instance for like meditation just three conscious breaths three breaths when you're conscious of the feeling of the breath going in and out or if it's exercise just three you know star jumps or whatever uh just the tiniest amount that that you can sort of notch up as okay i've done that for today um and he suggests that you tag these habits to something so it's like before you clean your teeth and maybe even things like cleaning teeth have gone you know have suffered from routine of not being done at the same time or in the same way but you know trying to tag things together and just have that consistency might be something that, that can help a little bit. You don't need to do, go out to do it. <laughs> you want to add something, David? Um, yeah, I was just going to say, Eric Byrne wrote a book many years ago. Mm -hmm. I think it was Eric Byrne. Um, in which he talked about strokes, that we all need a certain number of strokes or in other words, reinforcements every day in order to avoid becoming depressed. When we're in lockdown, and those strokes can be the things Meg described, uh, meeting some in the supermarket, having a quick chat 
to a stranger, whatever. We've been deprived of a lot of those strokes at the moment. Mm. So I think it makes people far more vulnerable than they normally would be. Mm. And I think it's quite important to try and create those strokes. Strokes can be internal or external. But to do things every day that lead you either to some interaction or else to some sense of achievement or worth mm. is really important. We mm. don't get enough strokes. Um, the theory was we don't thrive. Mm. And if we don't thrive, we become vulnerable to becoming depressed. Mm. Mm. Yeah. That's a um, fantastic tip, David. And maybe we should leave our conversation there. Um, mm. today. Yeah. Okay. yeah, nice thought. Small strokes, small bits, small bits. <laughs> yeah. Add strokes in the day. Yeah. <laughs> That's the takeaway message. All right, guys, it was lovely to um to have this conversation. We'll stop recording now. <laughs>